this is the broad index we are trying to cover in this particular session. So I will not take more than 12 to 13 minutes. So about customized energy solutions, we are primarily a US large uh, consulting organization with uh, presence in Canada, Japan, India, Mexico and Vietnam. So in US we manage, physically manage uh, 15,000 megawatts of assets. Uh, we have our own SCADA centers, network uh, operations in seven ISOs. US is typically managed under seven ISOs. In India we have only grid corporation, so US has around seven ISOs. And other than this we manage around one gigawatt of energy storage assets. So we have significant experience in terms of energy storage also in the US. We were established in the US in 1998 and uh, have around 500 clients worldwide. So as far as India is concerned, uh, we started in 2010. Uh, uh, you know, we have presence in uh, headquarters in Pune and then presence in Delhi and Bangalore. We do significant amount of work on the policy side through our platform called India Energy Storage Alliance. And uh, we are pioneers for the alternate cell chemistry policy at the central government level. Uh, our team is currently working on battery swapping policy at the central government level. And we keep uh, contributing. We also have a postdoctoral fellowship uh, with Department of Science and Technology on green hydrogen. Other than this, we have uh, till date done 1000 megawatt uh, hour of consulting on the energy storage. We were one of the leaders uh, in terms of consulting for uh, NTPC 3000 megawatt uh, energy storage project, which was actually bidded for by various companies, including Indigrid, and we actually consulted Indigrid in, in terms of their requirement for, you know, and the entire, entire uh, consulting was basically techno-commercial advisory plus bid simulation. So, you know, most of us are current, uh, very well uh, aware about what is the current scenario. Solar and wind are very clearly established. We generally work on, you know, central government guidelines very clearly say that we work on 70-30 debt equity ratio. It might differ from company to company, but most of the you know, central government tenders actually come with 70-30 debt equity ratio. Government has actually set large, uh, you know, target 500 gigawatt by 2030. Uh, efficiency is improving. We are seeing efficiency improvement from 20-22% to 28-30% also in some of the wind uh, projects. Uh, what is uh, emerging now, <coughs> as some of the other speakers have already also spoken about, is the BRSR, where that is Business Responsibility and Sustainability Reporting, which is very critical and important for India to really move ahead. What, who is driving BRSR today is the investors. Technically, it is the investors who are actually driving BRSR, otherwise it's very difficult for India to really go ahead and implement. The top thousand companies who actually control 75% of India's market capitalization is actually, uh, you know, are they, are they are supposed to report on various uh, <coughs> emission norms, SOX, NOx, everything, including water consumption, what are they doing on scope one, two, and three. And this is something that, uh, that will probably open up, you know, large amount of Pandora's box after two years, because SEBI is just going to collect the data for next two years and then probably start comparing it, uh, you know, company to company, because say, I am running a software company, you are also running a software company. So a lot of things will actually come out, uh, uh, you know, over a period of time in terms of who's reporting what. So I think these are going to be very good uh, emerging challenges for India. Uh, emerging storage like energy storage, green hydrogen, you know, cell manufacturing, we are pioneers for the alternate cell chemistry manufacturing policy at the government level. So important challenges, again, you know, despite the fact that solar and wind has been very well established, we see, uh, because we do significant amount of consulting on RE100. So RE100 is a climate group program which actually talks about, you know, how we can actually be part of the RE100 club where companies are 100% commit, committing to renewable. And uh, we have, in the last one year, probably done around eight, nine mandates, out of which three are very large companies. One is the largest e-commerce company in India, one is a large auto component company, and third one is a large data center. So we do complete RE100 roadmap for them, where then they have presence in six, seven, eight states, because power is a very complex subject, and in the state-wise it differs from, uh, you know, state to states, and how the policies actually run, how we actually, re, um, you know, take a step towards uh, 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 RE100 and most of these companies are actually taken up because for an e-commerce company with 23 states presence and you know 117 locations it's very difficult to really uh, plan for uh, renewable but they have actually announced RE100 as 2030 and the, the uh, auto component company also has announced RE100 as 2030. Uh, the data center company has announced 2028 and some of the software companies that we are actually dealing with in terms of their requirement for RDC and IRX, they are actually announced 2026 or 2027 as uh, you know, RE100. So <coughs> the, the real problem is the high cost of energy storage. When you talk about uh, you know, support to renewables, uh, the current costs are significantly higher. 
Uh, what typically problem people face is that uh, today, even today, I was on a panel discussion with in, on a green H2O, uh, you know, conference at Delhi, and Dr. Prasad Chafikar was there, who is the deputy secretary MNRE. And uh, despite the fact that the, the you know secretary level and the government is actually putting a significant amount of effort, <laughs> bankers are not willing to come forward. You know, these are some of the challenges that people are facing as far as energy storage is concerned. Solar and wind are you know typically very well established and long term 12 to 15 years sort of a funding is available. But uh, you know people are not willing to understand energy storage. Bankers are also finding it very difficult to really understand about batteries. You know, the real understanding between what goes, you know, goes with kilowatt and kilowatt hour is also something which is seriously missing with a lot of banks and financial institutions. Few of the bankers, you know, SBI recently funded a GEAP project in uh, uh, Karnataka, uh, which is basically, uh, you know, it's a very challenging project in the sense that it was basically driven by capacity. So, you know, to have a storage project with capacity driven uh, pricing is something which is very, very difficult because... Uh, uh, you know, at capacity level pricing, the rate cannot be anything less than, you know, 11 or 12 rupees per unit. So, which is very much higher than the current industrial rate of, uh, say, 7 or 8 rupees. So, these are all some of the challenges. Uh, we really need to have a, you know, subsidized interest rate uh, financing scenario because there is an RBI policy which talks about, uh, you know, some of the SDG challenges being made by bankers and those uh, are supposed to be under priority sector, but bankers are not really coming forward. So there needs to be a clear guideline in terms of what can be done and how it should be done actually. And uh, that is something which is very important because otherwise things will not happen, you know, because today your hydrogen cost is much higher, today your storage cost is much higher. Fortunately, in the last, uh, you know, three or four months, the battery cost has come down from, say, average $200 per kilowatt hour to, say, $130, $140 per kilowatt hour. Obviously, the storage costs are significantly reduced. But if you look at the real norms in India, uh, uh, you know, the storage cost is in the range of $280 to $300 per kilowatt hour. If you look at current pricing for uh, power sector, if, which is MYT driven, which is currently in the range of 14 to 17% ROE, which, you know, 14% for, uh, uh, you know, generation side and on the retail side, it's around 17%. So, can you actually work with 14 to 17% ROE as far as storage projects are concerned? It may, it may be difficult because, uh, you know, the, the rates actually go up with more, uh, uh, you know, ROE because this is something which is dedicated for next, say, 15 to 25 years, depending on the, the contract that we really enter into. And is there real amount of R&D that is happening in terms of new energy? People are putting in money. We are going ahead with so many, so much of PLI schemes. But, you know, in terms of, in, in terms of real R&D, I think we are still behind China by almost 10 to 12 years. So, what, what should really be driven in terms of, uh, 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 you know, the parameters for R&D is something that uh, more amount of uh, government funding should happen, uh, uh, you know, at the project level. I'll tell you one very important data point. Recently, uh, you know, uh, Inflation Reduction Act, which came out in the U.S., has got $400 billion of subsidy for various kinds of projects. So, if you look at U.S., 35 crore population, land size, which is four times that of India, you know, number of passenger cars, which are almost 80% of the total, you know, population. Uh, they have 33 crore vehicles. We also have 33 crore vehicles. But we have 80% two-wheelers. They have 80% passenger cars. So if you look at all these scenarios, if U.S. can give $400 billion of incentives, I think India should be at least at 10 to 12 lakh, 15 lakhs or crore sort of incentive. And currently, if you put together all PLI schemes, I don't think it is more in anything beyond 1, 1 lakh or 1, 1.25 lakh, lakh crore. So what we really need is significant amount of you know, focus on R&D, more money being actually given for projects which can actually be implemented. People will make mistakes, obviously, you know, you may, every, every project cannot be successful. But the important thing is that unless we make those mistakes or learn from those mistakes, things will actually not implement, you know, happen in a, in a big way. <coughs> so again, important, of, important challenges again remain is uh, establishment of alternative decarbonization models. Uh, you know, EV100 as a scenario which is very, very popular globally. Uh, is, is definitely a big challenge because whatever subsidy government is giving under FAME 1 and 2, it is only available for STU, CTU buses, it is not available for private sector buses. So what we are currently pushing at the government level is to really include under FAME 3 private sector buses where at least battery cost can be, uh, you know, subsidized to a certain extent. Uh, green hydrogen costs are too high, they are in the range of 4 to 5 dollars. Reliance is targeting 1 dollar but obviously when it will happen nobody knows. Uh, Obviously, grey hydrogen, which comes from SMR-based uh, technology, which is again LNG-based, is something that can, that the cost is in the range of 100 to 125 rupees, provided you are able to do, uh, if you are able to do CCUS, obviously the, you know, the benefits could come in terms of carbon credits, but uh, whether, how much time that will take is something that nobody knows. 
with with an organization like Reliance was declared net net zero as 2035, they are talking about one dollar at at uh, you know by 2030. So these are all challenges. If you look at green hydrogen cost today, uh, you know current uh, electrolyzer cost uh, you know, the consumption talks about 55 units uh, for converting say water into hydrogen. So you take it four rupees as per unit cost today for renewable, then plus that opex and depreciation and interest all put together, the cost per kg of hydrogen cannot be lower. So if you are talking about energy storage or green hydrogen as an area which can actually help you decarbonize in the future, so the challenges are majorly on the cost side. Open access has, has its own challenges, uh, and as I raised, uh, you know, so I was on the I was moderating a panel at uh, at the consular exhibition in, the, in Delhi and was, the last point is where I raised the question, if power, if hydrogen is tomorrow going to be used as a fuel at the same time it is going to be used as a power generating raw material source, will it ever come under MIT? So this is something which nobody has really been able to answer the question. I put this question to the ministry also because tomorrow somebody comes up with a solution and you want to generate, uh, you know, because I have worked upon a project which uh, has uh, along, along with LNT where we actually bid it for an NTPC project where Electrolyzers, uh, we are generating hydrogen and from hydrogen again we are generating electricity. So this is something which is legally very, very important parameter. If one factor of hydrogen comes under MYT, the fuel factor has to come under MYT. You cannot have two different parameters of pricing for one single product, which is going to be a very big emerging challenging scenario for India. So we worked out, you know, just to show you, showcase you how pricing actually works for from a Karnataka point of view. You know, whether it is BESCOM pricing or green, green open access pricing or green open access with captive. So you can see clearly the difference and if you take on the lowest side also, the cost per kg of only electricity from a hydrogen perspective is actually working out to rupees 230 to 200 to 230 rupees per kg. So this is something which is going to be make, make hydrogen based power generation a very, very difficult scenario, but people will definitely go for it in the coming years. So from a mitigation point of view, you know, priority sector norms is something that needs to be established. You bankers need to come forward. Innovative back-ended structures. See, when, when my, my career started, we used to do a lot of large amount of fundraising for electricity boards in India. So I have done at least 3,000 crore, uh, you know, lease, sale and lease back based funding for electricity boards in India, where we actually used to actually quote, do a back-ended quoting quote, you know, where the rental used to be, say, 8 rupees in the first year, 9 rupees in the second year, 12 rupees in the third year then 15 rupees in the fourth year. So this kind of a structuring needs to evolve because for any kind of new project, most important parameter is the cash flow. Businesses are all driven by cash flows. If there is no cash flow, you cannot have a running business. So you need to evolve innovative back-ended structure, which is very difficult in the current banking scenario. So we need to have different kinds of you know, companies. Those days when people used to do innovative back-ended structuring, they used to do it majorly for the purpose of depreciation because that depreciation is to help them in terms of tax saving. But in today's scenario, how bankers will actually do it is something which is very, very challenging. Move away from EMI based, uh, you know, every, every month I have to give you 100 rupees. Just move away from EMI based. Otherwise, how will sustainability happen? You know, you talk, when we talk about sustainability, right? Sustainability is an environmental challenge. When health is damaged, you pull out money from your savings, right? And there is no cost to that savings, right? In terms of because one, one side you lose the interest portion of it, but the second side it is an emergency for you, it's a necessity for you. So you cannot say that I will have, I am a private equity fund or a VC fund or whatever and I am a banker, I want to, you know, unless you have a good rating, I will not give you, be able to give you money below 12% or 13%. You need to have different innovative structures in place. Sustainability cannot happen with 15-20% expectation on return on equity for most of the projects. This is some, this is an, a big fallacy worldwide and that is what we are seriously, seriously missing. One side we talk about, uh, you know, uh, 100 billion dollars of money under Paris Agreement to come as grant. Grant doesn't have a cost, right? If it doesn't have a cost, how can you have an alternative financing mechanism which has 20% return on equity? It's not possible. You need to have a structure where it, it can actually be 7, 8, 10% sort of ROE. Your cost of funds has to be in the range of 6 to 7%. Priority sector, agriculture money is being given at 6 to 7%. So why can't? This is emergency, absolute emergency. Nobody is talking about it. Sustainability cannot happen with high amount of return on equity and high cost of debt. And higher focus on R&D. We are talking about a $10 trillion economy. I did recently did a, a, a survey where you know we compared... Electricity Regulatory Commission's reporting globally, say uh, uh, US, 
ऑस्ट्रेलिया साउथ अफ्रीका यूके एंड सिंगापुर कंपेयर टू दैट विथ यू नो फोर फाइव इलेक्ट्रिटी रेगुलेटरी कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर दैट वी आर मिसिंग हियर इज रिलायबिलिटी विदाउट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी नथिंग कैन हैपन विदाउट एनर्जी नथिंग कैन हैपन वी आर मिसिंग सिग्निफिकेंट अमाउंट ऑफ रिलायबिलिटी वी डू सम इंडाइस लाइक यू नो से एफ ई सेडी कई डी बट दीज आर ओनली रिपोर्टिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ दी प्लान फॉर रिलायबिलिटी यू एस हैज अ कंप्लीट रिलायबिलिटी कॉर्पोरेशन विच हैज विच सर्व फोर्टी क्रो पीपल द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ यू एस इज फोर्टी क्रोर एंड यू नो एनी आर सी विथ नॉर्थ अमेरिका कैनेडा ऑल ऑल कंट्रीज पुट टूगेदर ओनली सर्व फोर्टी क्रो पीपल विच इज ऑलमोस्ट द फुल पॉपुलेशन ऑफ यू एस सो इफ दे कैन हैव सच बिगर प्लान्स एंड हैव सच कॉर्पोरेशन विच आर ओनली एड्रेसिंग ओनली रिलायबिलिटी आई कूडेंट ले आर रिपोर्ट बियॉन्ड टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन देर इज अ वर्ल्ड बैंक रिपोर्ट विच टॉक्स अबाउट इंडिया इज रेटिंग फॉर रिलायबिलिटी एट हंड्रेड एंड एट मे बी यू नो आई डू आई कूडेंट फाइंड एनी रिपोर्ट बियॉन्ड दैट मे बी टूडे द रेटिंग इज इम्प्रूव टू थर्टी और फोर्टी और वट एवर बट वी कॉन्ट बी अ थर्ड लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी इन द इन द वर्ल्ड विथ ट्वेंटी फाइव रेटिंग और थर्टी रेटिंग वी नीड टू बी अमंग टॉप टेन राइट सो हु इज एड्रेसिंग रिलायबिलिटी इन अ बिग वे जस्ट बियॉन्ड इंडाइसिस and more important is when we invite global bids and global corporations to come and uh, do work in india we need to be reporting so the purpose of the project was clearly do comparative reporting uh, you know analysis as to what they report what kind of work they do and what is the work that actually is being done in india so this is very very important so you know i did a project also on vehicle to grid so you know brief analysis of buses india has 20 lakh buses out of which 6 lakh buses are corporate out of 6 lakh 50% are buses which actually run goes to plant every day so they run three shifts mostly 200 kilometers on a daily basis balance 50% are buses which actually you know run for most of the software companies or services companies uh, if you if you look at the bus density in india it is 1500 buses per million population <coughs> If you look at South Africa, it is five thousand buses. If you look at Brazil, it is five thousand buses. If you look at Thailand, it is eight thousand five hundred buses. So even if we consider five thousand buses per million population, India needs seventy-five lakh buses. All these needs to be EV, right? Most of them has to be EV. Some some will be say intercity hydrogen buses. But even an intercity hydrogen bus, if a typical battery electric bus requires three hundred kilowatt hour battery, a typical intercity hydrogen bus will definitely require a battery which is at least hundred kilowatt hour. it cannot have without uh, battery a small battery has to be there, there for a peak and trough requirement so if you, you can imagine what kind of scenario can emerge if if india actually goes to that level uh, you know private sector buses don't have subsidy each bus requires around 300 kilowatt hour battery and the, the, from the working that i have done even if up to 1 lakh buses we can actually reach to 24 gigawatt hours of storage supporting storage with almost 10 to 12% of cost as compared to the actual capex which is required because if i am buying a bus my cost is my battery cost is a sunk cost right i cannot recover it in any way other than recovering it through my bus utilization or utilizing it for as a as a source of energy if that can happen that is the only way it can be done uh, this is a practical model which has actually happened in uh, uh, you know i am aware of some data points people have purchased power in the afternoon uh, you know uh, sold the power back to uh, the same company in the evening and uh, if you take 14% roe the the power cost actually be, becomes five, anything between 5.9 to 6 rupees and it actually gives you a 14% roe the peak power uh, pricing in india is around 10 rupees uh, obviously uh, you know hp dam is almost at 20 rupees now and uh, uh, this arbitrage gives you a good 14% roe so this pro project is absolutely bankable project so this is something which can actually happen in india effective capex uh, uh, you know uh, if you look at consider 300 kilowatt hour battery is almost 74 lakhs as compared to that you can probably do a similar project at around 10 to 12% cost assuming that it is say used for one hour because if you look at the uh, uh, you know this is this is how the scenario actually can get built up uh, you know if you think this this is possible and uh, you know if you look at 1 lakh buses happening in the in 20 the 2930 you can actually have 24 gigawatt hour of uh, uh, you know storage facility being available so what are the technical parameters 80% dod i am done uh, one minute so you know 70% if you take it can be discharge and discharge uh, if four norms are there uh, bi directional charger is required and effectively subsidy can be 10% and it can also help in terms of uh, you know meeting the energy storage obligations so this is something which can actually happen uh, i have done a deep study to understand these numbers and work out the financial model also so these are some of the services that we provide as ces in terms of esg 
So, but, you know, we have a microgrid uh, solution which actually has done significant work in Jharkhand, and that project has actually won uh, Shale Game Changer Award uh, of $50,000 $50, price also. It is one of the best solutions in the country today in terms of microgrid. So, anybody who has interest in microgrid, please uh, uh, connect me. So, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. <laughs>